in that state of hypnosis, are you are you vulnerable at all to ideas or things that people say? Can people put ideas into your mind that end up sticking? Yeah, sometimes, sure. Um, <laughs> I hope that happens when people listen to your program, right? You know, you're trying to put ideas into their mind and some of them stick. If someone, if I want an audience that really hears what I'm saying and takes my advice, yes, I would like them to be somebody who knowingly goes into a state of self-hypnosis and uh, opens himself up to feeling different. And that can be a good thing. I had a young woman came to see me who was seven months pregnant. She had very bad lower back disease, terrible pain. The bigger the baby got, the more pain she had. Um, she um, uh, couldn't take medication because she uh, was pregnant. And her pain was seven out of 10. And they had put in nerve stimulators, didn't work. And I said, I want you just to imagine what you actually do to make your body feel better now. She said, I'm floating in a warm bath, you know, bath oils, the steam rising, the warmth penetrating feels good. So I said, good, we're going to do that now. And I had her imagine. And so she did it. And the pain, her pain was seven out of 10 when we started. We got it down to three out of 10. She said, I can live with this. And, but she looked angry. And I said, what are you angry about? And she said, why in the hell are you the last doctor I got sent to instead of the first? And so she could experience it. She was open to experience it, but she could also reflect on what it meant that nobody had helped her to use her mind in that way to control her pain. And so, yes, people are open and, and I'm glad about that, but it's their ability. I'm identifying it with them and teaching them how to use it. Has that been, I guess, tested more formally in a clinical trial, looking at hypnosis and pain reduction yes. compared to, say, other forms of psychotherapy or some type of control? Yes. Um, there are two kinds of studies I can tell you about. One we did, it was a study that we published in The Lancet, which is one of the leading British medical journals, 241 subjects undergoing uh, arterial cutdowns. It's a kind of surgery where you thread a catheter through an artery to chemoembolize tumors in the liver or to visualize uh, stenosis of arteries. It takes about two, two and a half hours. We don't use general anesthesia. They're anxious, they're, it's painful. And we had three conditions. So one, it was randomized, they didn't choose, we chose. One group just had the standard care, which is push a button and you get opioids into your bloodstream. The second was emotional support. So there was a friendly, trained, supportive nurse uh, just trying to comfort you, help you get through it okay. And the third, and they could also push the button, and the third was hypnosis. You're floating, cool, tingling, and numb, filter the hurt out of the pain, or go somewhere else. Imagine you're on a tropical island, you're not here having this done to you. A whole bunch of sug hypnotic suggestions to change the experience. So what happened at the end of the, uh, an hour and a half was that the average pain rating in the standard care group was five out of 10. In the nursing support group, the average pain was three out of 10. In the hypnosis group, it was one out of 10. And the hypnosis group was using half as much pain medication, pushing the button half as often as the other groups. They had fewer complications. They got done 17 minutes faster than the other groups. So it saved $338 a procedure. And so um, the hypnosis was compared to these, other, the emotional support helped some, but not nearly as much as hypnosis. And we looked at their anxiety levels during the procedure, and it was six out of 10 in the standard care group, three out of 10 in the nursing group, and zero in the hypnosis group. I thought they were all dead or something. They were just fine, no pain, no anxiety at all. So what do you think is happening there? If you think about, I guess, how hypnosis affects the brain, and we can go yeah, into that, we will. how could that lead to a, re a reduction in perceived pain? Well, you know, the, the strain in pain lies mainly in the brain. There are pain signals that come from damaged or injured tissue. They, they travel in a special way through the lateral spinothalamic tract, up through the reticular activating system to the thalamus, and then up to the somatosensory cortex. So there are all these way stations where pain signals come and they are processed, and the brain decides what's going on here. The brain is particularly trained to respond to acute pain because if you've just been bitten by a tiger, you better do something about it. Or if you've just sprained your ankle or broken your arm, you better do something about it. So it pays a lot of attention to it. There's a part of the brain uh, called the dorsal anterior cingulate gyrus. It's part of the salience network that says, 
oh my God, there's something terrible happening. You better pay attention to it. We're pretty pathetic animals. We're not very big. We're not very fast. We don't hear that well. We don't see that well. We don't smell that well. So we had better react when there's a threat. That's how we survived to be sitting here today. Our species has. Um, but the brain modulates pain. It decides this is a big deal or it isn't. So a big proportion of what you report as pain has to do with how your brain interprets it. Is this some old problem that I know is going to go away and I'm not worried about it? Or is it a new injury that I have to do something about? So we've shown, as other researchers have shown, um, that the brain changes the way it processes the same signal. So in one early study, um, we took high, in, high hypnotizable Stanford students. Um, we gave them shocks to the wrist. And in one condition, they just felt it. And in another condition, we said, your hand is in circulating ice water, cool, tingling, numb. And within a tenth of a second, the, the first wave of brain response to the pain signals was gone. And the, the wave that usually comes, we call the P300, at th a third of a second after, was half as big. So same signals, same people, but they're processing it differently. There was an experiment done by a group in Canada in which they did that same kind of setup. Um, and they, uh, in one condition, said, your hand is cool, tingling, and numb, it's in ice water. And it turned down activity using PET imaging uh, in the somatosensory cortex, the part of the brain uh, that processes all, con all sensation, including pain sensation. So you were able to reduce activity in the same region. If you did the same thing, but then said to them, pain's there, but it won't bother you, which is kind of the way people feel when they take opioids. It was the uh, dorsal anterior cingulate, the part of the salience network where activity was turned down. In both cases, the pain reports were lower, but different parts of the brain were involved depending on what you told them in hypnosis. So the brain is a signal processor that tells you, is this worth paying attention to or not? And it can modulate pain substantially. So one of those examples that you just mentioned there, one of those studies that was more of an acute kind of pain that you yeah, described. But yeah. what about populations, let's say people that have chronic lower back pain or osteoarthritis, right. is, there, is there any clinical evidence or uh, at least anecdotal evidence from your clinical experience where you've seen hypnosis can lead to pain reduction within that context? Uh, we have it anecdotally, but we have randomized clinical trials. So twice now, we've done studies with women with metastatic breast cancer. About two out of three women with metastatic breast cancer have pain. It makes them very anxious. You know, you feel a pain in their rib and they think, oh my God, the tumor's growing. I'm going to die sooner. It's awful. And we, we would meet with them once a week give them emotional support, help them help one another face their fears. And we taught them self-hypnosis at the end to control their pain. At the end of a year, in a randomized comparison, the women in the support group had half the pain the control group did on the same and very low amount of medication. Their pain went down, the pain in the other group went up. And it has to do with the brain's either amplification or ability to control the pain because they knew that they could control it. And so if they start to feel a new pain, instead of freaking out and thinking, oh my God, I'm going to die very soon, they said, I know how to control this. I'm going to imagine I'm taking a warm bath and filter the hurt out of the pain. So we have evidence from randomized clinical trials that we've published that hypnosis can significantly reduce chronic pain as well. Mm -hmm.